Hi, welcome to a gentle yoga practice. My name is Kaylee. When you're ready, you can meet me laying all the way down on your belly. So we'll just stretch out, open up the hips gently. I invite you to do whatever feels most comfortable with your arms. So some people like to make a little pillow by stacking the hands. It might feel good to release the arms at your side and really let the shoulders melt. Check in, figure out what feels really most easy for your body to relax into. And then just drop in, maybe let the eyes close. Let your body start to feel heavy against the surface of the ground. Almost as if you could melt into the floor underneath you. Let the muscle tension melt away. And just start to breathe in a way that helps you feel even more connected. And the breath might lengthen a little bit. It might deepen breathing, bringing some of that prana into areas that feel a little tighter even pockets of discomfort that you might have. And if you happen to have your head nodded to one side or the other, you can go ahead and switch, relaxing the neck and the shoulders, and then melt right back in. Take just a handful more breaths here. Start to bring the chin forward. Let's bend the knees and toggle your lower legs side to side. Just a little windshield wiper. This could be a small range of motion. Notice how your pelvis is moving here. Go ahead and release the legs long back behind you. Walk the feet a little closer together. We're going to lift the right leg, keep it straight, just lift the right leg up, so really opening up through the hips. It's a really great counter stretch, I should say, opening up through the front of the hips. So we're lifting that right leg straight up, really stretch back through your right foot and toes, and find your glutes perhaps, so the back of the right upper leg and thigh, breathe in. And then slowly lower that leg down, let both legs relax, and then we'll lift the left leg. So you can start with lifting it not super duper high, just kind of test out the waters here. It's actually more about how much you can reach the leg, not just up, but also back in space. So opening up through the left hip socket, really reaching through your foot and your toes. Good, breathe in, maybe the leg lifts a little higher, and then release it down on the exhale. Relax your legs, press into a child's pose, bringing your knees narrow or wide. Feel free to experiment with what feels best today. And start to breathe into your back body here as you crawl the fingers forward, let the elbows leave the mat. Continuing to encourage your hips back towards your heels. You're really just looking for space in the body in a practice like this. And finding areas that maybe have gotten a little congested or a little tight or a little sleepy. And going in and just bringing a little brightness, a little awareness into those pockets, into those tissues. On an inhale, go ahead and slide forward to your hands and your knees. Tuck the toes under, round your spine as you find cat, chin toward your chest. Let your shoulders melt toward your ears. 
Untuck the toes, come into cow pose as you press into the tops of the feet. Little mini bend in the elbows, pulling the heart through the arms, maybe lifting the chin up. Stay here, take a big breath in. And then cat pose on the exhale, tuck the toes, press into the balls of the feet and the palms of the hands. Cow, untuck the toes, breathe in as you extend through your stomach. And then cat again, round, tuck the toes under. One more cow, big breath in. And then find a relatively neutral spine here as you exhale. We're gonna extend the right leg straight back, really lengthen back instead of lifting up. See if you can reach the right ankle back, reach the crown of the head forward. So you're growing long in that right hip area, find space. Take a big breath in, maybe the leg lifts higher. And then drop the right knee down, press back to a child's pose, maybe not all the way, just a little bit back. We're gonna shift forward on the in breath and lift the left leg. Same thing here. Try and reach the left ankle away from the hip socket without shifting the whole body back. Shoulders stay stacked over your wrists. Lift high on the in breath. For child's pose as you exhale, we're gonna move side to side. The inhale, you lift forward, reach the right leg. Exhale toward your child's pose, release into the low back. Shift forward, left leg, breathe in. Child's pose, nice long exhale, and then keep going side to side here. It's not a race. So actually see if you can slow it down and feel a little bit more integration of this movement, of your balance, of how your body works together as this unified instrument. If you want a little more, you're feeling pretty good and confident in this movement, add the opposite arm. So as the right leg reaches back, left arm comes forward. We'll keep moving like this just for another few seconds with or without the arm. Keep working into your breath. So see if you can sync up the inhales to that stretch and the exhales to your child's pose. Just a little more flow today. The next time you land in your child's pose, go ahead and stay there, breathe. From child's pose, crawl all the way back forward onto your belly. We're gonna come into Sphinx, elbows underneath your shoulders. Your fingers point forward, your palms can turn up or down, whatever's most comfortable in the wrist is great. And then relax the legs. I always like to bring a little bit of movement, kind of wiggle through the hips, rotate the heels side to side. We're focusing a lot on the back of the body today. You feel into that gentle, passive compression in your lower back. So those vertebra of your lumbar spine are moving closer together. Let the belly open and soften on the mat beneath you. And then with the eyes soft or even closed, scan the length of your body from the crown of your head all the way down to the tips of your toes. As you scan from top down and from toes up, just notice these patterns of how we exist in our bodies that often are just beneath the surface of our awareness. Practice of yoga lets us kind of uncover some of those habits, tension, maybe find a little bit more attuned alignment so that over time we feel 
Just a little less discomfort from our movement patterns. Maybe feel a little bit more at ease in our bodies. And stay here or come into your sphinx pose, pressing your palms down. Or excuse me, into your seal pose when we're in sphinx. Pressing the palms down, straightening out the elbows a little bit. Either way, go ahead and invite some very slow, gentle movement into the head and the neck. Kind of explore. It might feel good to look shoulder to shoulder, to nod the chin up and down, or to take little half or full circles. Wherever you landed, take one more long breath in. And then lower all the way down, nice and slow. We're going to come into sleeper pose. So left to left knee, out to the left, in line with the hip. The same thing as when we started on the belly. Whatever feels most natural for your arms is perfect. You can nod the head to one side. You can create kind of a bowl pose or a cactus shape. You drop one or both arms down your side. And relax that left inner thigh and knee down. So it feels like you're resisting gravity here. Can you adjust, maybe reduce the angle of the bend in the knee or increase it so that you feel like you can really allow gravity to help relax you into the stretch. A really great place to stay if you're feeling comfortable here. If you want a little more, you can add on a couple pieces. One thing you could try is extending that left leg straight out from the hip. And of course, my foot is now off of camera, but you get the idea. Stacking or aligning the hip, the knee, and the ankle. If that feels great, you can stick with that. If that doesn't feel great, re-bend the knee. And then another thing you can do is bend your back knee, that right leg, so that the foot comes up. You can stay there or reach back with the right hand, catch the right foot and find a quad stretch. If you added pieces in, if you added an extended left leg or a bent right knee, notice if you picked up tension in your jaw or if your breath became a little choppy. Those things might be indications that your time here could possibly be more productive by taking on a little less so that your nervous system has a chance to Really relax and calm. If you caught the right foot, go ahead and slowly release it without slingshotting that way. If you straighten to the left knee, re-bend it, and then slide that left leg all the way back behind you. Take a couple breaths. Notice the difference between the right side and the left side of your lower body, your lower back, your pelvis. Before we switch to the other side, we're going to take a wide arm cobra. So feet are in line with your hips back behind you, point the toes, and then bring your fingers wider than your yoga mat. Elbows are pointing not just up, but back. Push into the finger pads as you lift the hips, or lift the chest rather, press into the hips. Hips are going to stay down here. And then roll it down nice and slowly. Maybe your nose or your forehead tops your mat. Let's do a couple more. Inhale, take your time to roll up and play around with how much you straighten the elbows here. And then exhale, roll it back down. The last one, wide arm cobra. Take a big breath in as you lift. And then lower all the way down. Set up sleeper pose with the right knee coming out to your right. Take your time to settle in and turn around so that I have space. If you're near a wall, you might need to do the same thing. And 
And then as best as you can, work with gravity. Let the weight of your right knee release down. And keep the jaw soft. And if you'd like, you can play around with extending the right leg away from the hip. Again, jaw stays nice and soft. Maybe you stay there, maybe you bend the left knee so that that foot comes up. And then reach your left hand for your left foot. Finding a sense of length in the front of the left hip and thigh. Pop the left foot, release nice and slow. If you straighten the right leg, re-bend the knee, and then in any case, slide that right leg all the way back. Pause and breathe. I'm going to set up for wide arm cobra again. We'll add a little shoulder dip. Fingers out wider than your mat. Press into the tops of the feet as you lift your chest. Look toward your right shoulder and then drop the left shoulder down toward the middle of your mat. Left ear down toward the middle of your mat. Back to that wide arm cobra. Breathe in. Look left. This time, drop right shoulder and right ear. Back to wide arm cobra. Let's go each direction again. Exhale. Left shoulder drops as you look to the right. Back to wide arm, breathe in. Switch sides, look left, drop right. Wide arm cobra through the center. Lower just halfway down, and then release your arms by your side. So we're in locus just with the arms. Keep pressing the hips, the front of the hips, the tops of the thighs down. As you really reach back through your fingers, roll the shoulder blades away from your ears and toward one another. Palms are facing down, or you might start to spin the palms to face out, thumbs uh, point up. Notice if you picked attention in the jaw, it's really easy to start to clench the teeth when we're working a little harder. Breathe in, relax the jaw, lower all the way down. Arms by your side, let the palms turn up and the thumbs point toward your body. The elbows might bend a little bit, let the shoulders melt away from your spines. We're using the upper back muscles when we come into that locust shape. And when we relax, we want to relax those upper back muscles as well. Let them stretch. Come back to the center. Lift the arms, rotate the palms down, lift the head, the neck, the chest. Stay here or lift your legs. Set your eyes to one spot or even close your eyeballs down. If you need a drishti, pick a point right out past the tip of your nose, straight in front of you. Lift high, take a breath in. Release down as you empty. Relax for a moment. We've got two more locusts. Lift up. You can absolutely take just the arms or just the legs. One more breath in, lift it high, and then release it down on the exhale. Last time in Locust, this time you have the option to interlace your hands at your lower back and tug the knuckles back and or to flex your feet, bend your knees, push your heels up. So it's almost like a bow pose here. We're definitely activating the glutes. Drive the heels toward the ceiling if you're in this variation with me here. Big, big breath in. 
and then release it all the way down. Relax onto your belly, onto your chest. You might windshield wiper the lower legs again, or just kind of wiggle through the hips side to side. Eventually work your way back to a tabletop or a child's pose position. And we're gonna set up for our last shape deer pose today. So right knee is gonna point over toward the right. Left knee is moving toward the sole of the right foot. Take a moment to kind of shift forward and backward a little bit. And then we're gonna walk the hands in front of the right shin. We're looking for a stretch in the outer edge of the right hip and thigh. Start to walk your fingertips forward. And it's way less about how deep into a forward fold you get than it is about noticing a sense of like productive length in the outside of the right hip and thigh. See if you can go inward, notice how your body is responding. Let go of any kind of attachment to how the pose looks so that you can fully experience how the pose actually feels. Just a couple more breaths here. If your head is hanging free, it might feel good to bring some gentle movement into the neck by nodding the chin side to side. As you're ready, start to walk the hands back in toward your body. Bring the hands back behind you. We're gonna pivot the knees up and then just toggle the knees side to side, a little counter stretch. Nice and slow. If it feels good, you can lift the heart, lift the chin. And then we'll set up deer on the other side. So left knee bends and points to the left, and the right foot is, or right knee is moving toward the left foot. Shift forward and backward a little bit. So find that back sit bone. It's okay if we don't stay on it, but just do a little kind of calibration with the hips here. And then bring your fingers in front of your left shin. And notice the sensations in the outer edge of the left hip and thigh. Maybe close the eyes as you drop into the shape. Breathe into the stretch. Same thing here, if it would feel good to bring some mobility into the neck. And let gravity help open some space in those very top vertebrae. Maybe even letting the skull feel a little more spacious here. And start to walk the hands back in and then all the way back behind you. Toggle the knees side to side. Perhaps you bring the feet a little closer together here. And then as you roll onto your back, bring your left knee with you. Left hand is gonna catch that left knee. And then just move the knee around. So check in with the hip socket. The left hand's there just for some support. Your right arm can be out to the side, be balanced. Switch the direction of those knee circles. 
your left knee a good squeeze in toward your chest with both of your hands. Really nice good squeeze there. And then switch legs, bring the right knee in gently, left leg extends. And then just move around through the right hip. Now, you can also do this with the left foot down. You could mention that as well. If that feels better in your body, go with it. Switch the direction of your knee circles. Hug the right knee into your chest. Both hands, give it a good squeeze. Find some space in the lower back. And Shavasana. If there's any other shapes that you need before you can rest easy on your back, you can add those in. You can also choose to take a different resting shape. You could take butterfly with the soles of the feet together. You could take legs at the wall. And the important thing is that it feels like rest. Let the eyes soften or close if they have it. Relax the space between your brows, smoothing out any tension across the forehead or in the temples. Stay here just for a few moments and listen for my voice shortly to close our practice. start to bring some gentle movement back into the body. Maybe you circle the ankles or curl the toes, wiggle the fingers, nod the head. Eventually, you take your time to find a seat. You can roll through the fetal position first if you'd like. Maybe you seated with the hands around heart center. Acknowledging yourself for taking some time, for carving out a little space in your day to take care of your body, to shift your attention inward so that you're more connected to your own authentic needs and self and truth. From here, we'll take a big cleansing breath, reach the arms up over your head as you sip in a huge breath of air. Hold the breath at the top. See if you can sip in even more. And then let it go. Thank you for your practice. I really do hope it helps you. And I believe that it, I believe that it helps. So thanks for being here.